Of course, um, shout out to Sarah uh, Pinkstein, the, uh, the director of the creation sector uh, in the University of Vegas, for all the improvement of the entity has contributed to the success of the institution. Information which you must have the the just are the year are finishing four months and Divided of the body of the Thank you. 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, please. Sorry. 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 Right, 
Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I'm going to get a Sorry, can I get an Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm doing a live stream. That's our family. That's our family. I didn't get the first, but that's why I'm here. It's not on top of your principal. It's near my own principal. It's near my own principal. I'm doing the last thing. I don't know if you can see it.
So now he's funding the executive. Are you sure you're not going to report for your phone? <laughs> it's just for this side, the inside, there's a camera. Well, Please move. move. So, can we move, please? And the former boss of our university, Dr. Dekule, you're welcome. Please give them a round of applause. Also with us, the man they call the Jagaban of Mascom in Africa, Professor Ralph Akifeleye. Please give him a round of applause. And on that note, I want to say thank you and welcome to all the people of the fourth estate of the realm, print, media, social bloggers, whatever, we say thank you. Thank you for promoting the university. Thank you for promoting our brand. Please help me give them another round of applause. Once again, I say a good and a warm good afternoon to everyone, and that shortly we will be starting. Once again, the toilets are on either side of this auditorium, male, female on every side. The nursing at the medical station is just out of the door. Three doors lead you out of this door, and there are three other stores on the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right. We are done at that place. As I see our guest lecturer, we are going to be sending a case by the of the of Nigeria.
and amongst them, please, I recognize Dr. Yinka Ajayi, a warm round of applause for him. Mr. Tokumba Longe, a round of applause. Dr. Kweku Adedayotando, another round of applause, please. Dr. Muiz Banira, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, a round of applause. Mr. Shegun Awolawo, please give him a round of applause. Last but not the least, Mr. Shegun Adesanya, please give them a round of applause. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Hakim Adisa Bangbola, Commissioner, Local Government Service Commission, we welcome you. And he says he's a guest of the Honorable Speaker. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Sir. Please give him a round of applause. Chairing this convocation lecture is Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Auge. She has the prestigious national honor of the Commander of the Order of Niger. She's a Justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I have just been told that she got her LLM from this brand, University of Lagos. And so it's our pleasure to have her in our midst. She's also going around the exhibitions. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. <laughs>
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon once again. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 52nd Convocation Lecture. It's the beginning of our Convocation Ceremonies. And we will take the National Anthems, followed by the University of Lagos Anthem. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we'll take the opening prayer. Professor Timothy Nubi, please come and give us the opening prayer. Blessed Redima, we thank you for this day. It's a special grace to plan an event, and it's extra grace to witness or participate in that event. We well, thank you for your mercy and protection over the University of Lagos. We well, thank you for the life of the leadership. We well, thank you for their efforts that brings us to where we are, that we can look back and say with joy and assurance, a binisari. Thus far, God has led us. We gather again, marking the beginning of the week set aside to celebrate success, to celebrate with families. We gather today with the convoc convocation lecture. Father, in all we will do today, take preeminence, guide us lead us. Let the lectures of today be one of those discourse and presentation that will move this nation forward. Thank you because you have answered us. At the end of today, may we look back and say, blessed be thy name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Please let's be seated. Thank you very much. 
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, once again, I welcome you to the 52nd convocation lecture. It's the beginning of our 52nd convocation ceremonies. And our guest lecturer has been with us to chair this August occasion in January. I have the pleasure to introduce to us Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Augie, CON, Commander of the Order of Niger, Justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please give her a round of applause. Thank you very much, ma'am. Also with us is our Pro Chancellor, the Chairman Governing Council of our university. I recognize Senator Prince Dr. Larry Tedioshio. Please a round of applause. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the 12th Vice Chancellor of University of Lagos, the University of First Choice, and the nation's pride. Permit me to introduce Professor Oluwatoyin Temitayo Ogudipe, FAS. Our oh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academic and Research, Professor Oluwale Familoni, FAS. Please a round of applause for him. Our oh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development Services, Professor Ayodele Ashenwa. Please a round of applause for her. Our oh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Management Services, Professor Lucian Chuku. A round of applause, please. The Registrar of our University, Olade Joaziz Esquire. Please give him a round of applause. Permit me to introduce the boss of our university, Dr. Lekon Lawal. Please, a round of applause. The university librarian, Professor Yechinde Zaid. Please, a round of applause for her. The provost of the College of Medicine of the University of Lagos, Professor Wale Oke. Wale Oke. Please, a round of applause for him as well. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our post chancellor chairs the council of our university. Let me say that in our midst are the council members. I have the pleasure to introduce to us Dr. Aminu Hamed. Please give him a round of applause. Chief Chinedum Adindum, please a round of applause for him. Dr. Elizabeth Urogadna, a round of applause. Comrade Mustafa Salim, a round of applause for him. I have the pleasure to introduce to us Professor Bola Obo. Please give her a round of applause. Professor Solomon Akiboye, a round of applause, please. Professor Kemi Odukoya, please give him a round of, give her a round of applause. Professor Latif Kuye, a round of applause, please. Last but not the least, Olu Rotsi Mishodimu Esquire, please give him a round of applause. I am glad to say that indeed we are ready. And our guest lecturer is here with us. Let me introduce to us today's guest lecturer the guest lecturer for the 52nd Convocation Lecture, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. You're welcome to our message. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I will call on our Vice Chancellor for his welcome remarks. Please keep clapping as I introduce and call to the podium, the Vice Chancellor of the University of First Choice and the Nation's Pride, the 12th Vice Chancellor of University of Lagos, Professor Ogundipe. I want to return all the glory to the Almighty God. The speaker of today's convocation lecture, 1983 alumnus of the University of Lagos, the right honorable Tony Majabi Amila, the chairperson of this occasion, and that is Justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Aoge, CON. The Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, also an alumnus of the University of Lagos, 
distinguished senator, Dr. Lanry Tejosho. The governor of Ogun State, Our Excellency Noimont Salako Oyedele, the former deputy governor of Lagos State, His Excellency Femi Pedro, all the honorables that are here, you are recognized and celebrated. And I want to recognize the chairman of the tertiary education committee of the House of Reps, Honorable Aminu Sulaiman, the members of council, the members of management, the deans of the faculties that are here. Let me also recognize the deputy vice chancellors, uh, deputy vice chancellor, academics and research, Professor Luoli Familoni, deputy vice chancellor, development services, Professor Ayodele Ashenwa, deputy vice chancellor, management services, Professor Dusia Obina Chuku, the registrar of the University of Lagos, Oladejo Aziz Esquire, the university, Bossa, Dr. Le Konlawa, the University Liberian, Professor Mrs. Yotunde Zaid, the Provost College of Medicine, um, the deans of the faculties, the members of Senate who approved the, all the results that we are going to consider for the award of degrees, the directors that are here, the deputy registrars, deputy bosses, other members of the community, friends of the university, presidents and members of the alumni association, our students that are here, great Akokites, great Akokites, greatest of the greatest of the greatest Akokites. President of professional bodies here present, president of the faculty association, gentlemen of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to commence these activities of the 52nd Convocation Ceremonies of the University of Lagos. It is a great honor to have you great men and women, including the wives of the Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellors that are here, and people that have come from different locations to celebrate the 52nd Convocation Ceremonies of our great university. The Convocation Lecture is indeed an important aspect of the Convocation Ceremonies as it affords the university an opportunity of inviting an eminently qualified individual as guest lecturer to address any national or international issue of concern at the last three convocation lectures, the university had the opportunity of inviting the former governor of Lagos State, Mr. Kiyomi Ambode, whose lecture was entitled Inclusion, Path to a New Nation. The vice president, who is also an alumnus of this university, who is the vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. S-A-N-G-C-O-N, -N, whose lecture was titled, Nigeria Rising, the Path to Prosperity. And the last one before this was given by the governor of Central Bank, Mr. Godwin Emefele, who spoke to the, who spoke to the title, National Development and Knowledge Economy in the Digital Age, leapfrogging SMEs into the 21st century. These lectures indeed address the pressing national issues. Today, we have continued in the tradition by inviting an alumnus of the 1983 set from the Faculty of Law, an eminent personality who has distinguished himself as a lawmaker, a Democrat, Institute Administrator, and a goal getter. Since he joined the House of Representatives in 2003, he has positively impacted the country through the numerous bills 
he sponsored and the insightful contributions he makes during debates at plenaries. He therefore did not come to us as a surprise that he eventually became the speaker of the House in 2019. His constituency in Surulere, Lagos has benefited immensely from his exemplary leadership, foresight, and benevolence. Ladies and gentlemen, not only does the guest lecturer come with great pedigree and vast experience, but also with passion for the University of Lagos. I acknowledge that he has demonstrated his passion in many ways. For instance, Right Honorable Fermi Bajabi Amila supported the university with internet facilities and hotspots at faculties and hostels to allow students to enjoy free Wi-Fi. He also facilitated the building of multi-million Naira international hostel to students in the university to demonstrate his commitment for completion of the project. He had visited the site twice to see the progress by himself. The university is proud of Right Honorable Femi Bajami Ali for his commitment to improving the Nigeria university system as a whole. This he has demonstrated through various legislations aimed at advancing the university system. It is on record that he played a vital role in averting an impending industrial strike by ASU last um, year, December. And by the time we finish this program, it's also going to do the turning of the soil at the um, loot for a new building that is coming up at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. The title of the lecture, Building Back Better, Creating a New Framework for Tertiary Education in Nigeria in the 21st century, again reflects his passion for the university system and why he believes that HEIs have major responsibility in nation building. To chair this convocation lecture, we have also carefully selected a very respected justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Amina Adamo Aoge, C-O-N, for our reputation and track record of excellence. We strongly believe that this convocation lecture will stimulate debate on the role of university in building a strong Nigeria. In this regard, permit me to highlight some of the university's achievements in the areas of research, internationalization, infrastructure, upgrade, and other facets. Since this administration came in um, November 12, 2017, the University of Lagos, we have had four convocation and three convocation ceremonies. The first one was in May 2018, and there I highlighted the goals of this administration using the six point agenda of University of Lagos. The U in UNILAG stands for uncompromising academic standard and excellent research output. To the glory of God within the past four years, this university has attracted research grants of over 17 billion Naira. And this attracted um, recognition from Ted Fund saying that University of Lagos is the, university, is the best university in the Southwest that utilizes research grants. The N in Unilag stands for Network Globally, Strategizing Locally, and Consolidating Nationally. Presently, we have networking with so many universities within Nigeria, in Africa, in Europe, in the US, and everywhere in this country. And with these, our colleagues, over 260, they have been able to use that network to attract research grants to the University of Lagos. 
And just last week, we got another research grant of 140,000 euro. Also based on our networking, um, we have the European universities coming together. And University of Lagos is the only university recognized in Africa to collaborate with other universities in Spain, in France, in Italy, and other European countries. The I in Unilag standing for improving university finances by innovative fundraising activities, infrastructural development, and entrepreneurship orientation. Uh, in the last while, we have been able to bring in the friends of the University of Lagos who have assisted and also alumni who have assisted um, the university in various ways. We have Alaji Femi Okunu, who has been able to give us the vertical extension that we have in the Faculty of Law. And presently, if you go to the Faculty of Law, you see the exit steps, the stairs that is being under construction. Also, you go to the HRDC building. The renovation of HRDC building was done by a friend of the university, Dr. Akintoye Akindele, to the tune of over 200 million naira. Also, we have the Natural History Museum, which be the, the, the first of its kind in the University of Lagos. Also, a friend of the university put that one up with over 200 million naira. We have other projects that we have been able to attract. The one from Chief Kesintin Adebutu, who has been able to assist us with 200 million naira to, for, to improve on our internet facilities and make our internet to be friendly and for the usage of the student. Presently in the College of Medicine, almost a billion naira is used for the building uh, of the animal science building in the College of Medicine. This donated also by Chief Kesintin Adebutu. We have other donors that have been able to assist the university in various ways. Then the leadership that is transformational, transparent, and transnational. You see in the university, you come into the university, you can see peace, you can enjoy peace. You can feel the peace that we have in this university. It's because of the leadership role, openness by the leadership, openness in operation, openness in management, openness in running the university, and being firm when it's the right time to take decision. Accountability in academics, administration, finance, and all university policies. At this point, I want to acknowledge the contribution of our pro-chancellor, distinguished senator, Prince Dr. Larry Tejosho, for the way he has been managing the council and running the council effectively, putting the interests of the university first and all the members of the council believing in this university as truly the university of first choice and the nation's pride. The last G in Unilag, that is greater than the best. I make bold to say that Unilag is a brand, a brand in this country a university that is recognized in this country and outside this country, a university that is referred to as the powerhouse of research in Nigeria and recognized in Africa. What have we also done? We have networked with University of Stellenbosch and with that, we have been able to train our students in the area of leadership. Our students took advantage of this internationalization drive and they are able to attract grants to the University of Lagos. Our students are getting international grants too. It's not only academic staff, even non-teaching staff, two of our non-teaching staffs, we are able to attract research grants to the University of Lagos. And a student at the Chemical Engineering Department won the fully funded, prestigious do chemical do Innovators Invention Program, a nine-month fully funded internship program in Switzerland. Also five of our students won the three months African Leadership Internship Program with the Bank of America in 2021. Our students in the area of entrepreneurship 
they have been doing very well. What the university intend to do is to register companies for the students and with the support of the Bank of Industry, get the startup grant of maximum of 2 million Naira for them to start their business and also bring in mentors, have mentors that will mentor them and people that will teach them management of time so that they'll be able to blend with their academic program. So let me just stop at that concerning our students because there are a lot of things, a lot of testimony to give concerning our students. Let me go to the issue of COVID-19 and e-learning. We are all witnesses to the negative impact of COVID-19 on the world and indeed on higher education. However, upon resumption, as directed by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 2021, and realizing that pandemic was still with us, the university therefore went fully online to play our part in the natural effect to stem the tide of COVID-19. We want to thank the University of, university of Lagos Senate for taking decision on that. We developed an e-learning platform for our students and supported them. There's no university that has been able to do that in Nigeria to the best of my knowledge. I don't know about Africa, but I know about Nigeria. The students were given free data during the examinations, and this cost the university over 18 million Naira. We also conducted our examination online. We were the first university to do so in Nigeria and extended this to the post UTME examination. And the registrar of JAM came to inspect the way the post UTME exam was conducted. And he gave us a pass mark concerning that. Also, our PG exam was done online and some of their courses we are also taking online for sustainability and continuity. The university developed an e-learning policy. While other people are talking about e-learning, e-learning, we have our own e-learning policy. If you approach our website, you can download the University of Lagos e-learning policy. On behalf of the university, I'd like to appreciate the great support from philanthropists that I have mentioned earlier, um, including Dr. Jim Ovia. At the last convocation, I mentioned that we need 3,500 tablets for our indigent students, 3,500. And Dr. Jim Ovia paid for the 3,500 tablets, which will be given to the students. And also, we, are, we have some at the university library. What about the staff and student welfare? In terms of staff welfare, this administration has also done everything necessary to resolve all bottlenecks affecting staff promotion and career advancement. Again, we want to appreciate the support, the understanding, the robust management skill of the pro-chancellor, distinguished senator, Prince Dr. Larry Tejiosho. Many academic staff who have been stagnated for many years, we are processed for promotion once they met the required criteria for promotion. Also, the non-teaching staff who have been stagnated for years, we are allowed to do exam or to go through one training or the other. And today, just on Saturday, over 800 people were promoted under the leadership of distinguished Senator Prince Teju, Teju Osho. Students also receive greater attention in terms of provision of water, um, regular electricity, transportation, prompt release of their results, establishment of counseling units at faculties and religious centers, provision of free data, like I said earlier on, and all improvement concerning the Wi-Fi that we have on campus. In terms of infrastructure, I mentioned this earlier on, uh, what we have been able to benefit from the friends of the university, from the alumni, and also from the government agency. Let me talk about security. In the area of security, we are mindful of our location. You know, I always say we are surrounded by slums. 
But we want to give God all the glory that within the campus of the University of Lagos, we enjoy peace. And because of this, we have sent about 800 of our security personnel for training with the Nigerian police. And um, the 40 set just finished about um, three weeks ago. Furthermore, we enter into an agreement with Bionomics Nigeria Limited through the approval of council to provide full CCTV coverage of our entire um, campus located in Akoka, Idiaraba, and Yaba to ensure security of our environment and safety. I've spoken concerning entrepreneurship and innovation, but I'm grateful to some people for their support concerning this. We want to thank the CEO of Zenith Crafts and um, Lufthansa Bank of Industry, Canon, the Office of the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and many other reputable institutions that have been supporting us, including alumnus like Digi Master Digi Macaulay, the managing partner of Trustware Solution, who funded part of our programs that we have for our students, the entrepreneurship program. Recently, we have support for our students to the tune of 5 million Naira from another uh, friend and also alumnus of the university for the engineering student in the area of innovation. The finals of that competition for the innovation, which, take, which took place on Friday, January 14, the winners will be announced during convocation. Ladies and gentlemen, this year is a year of celebration in the University of Lagos, because after the battle, the glory is becoming bigger and bigger. Nuga Games is coming in March, from March 16 to March 26. Also this year, the university will be celebrating the 60th anniversary come October 3rd. We want to sincerely thank all our donors and for their kindness, philanthropic gesture, which is helping in great measures to uplift the University of Lagos. Let me say this, in the last convocation ceremonies, I did, let me say this to the glory of God, will be the last convocation ceremonies that I will preside over as the 12th Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. I'm also glad to have concerning this special occasion, not that I'm giving my exit speech, but I want to recognize the support that I personally got from the honorable speaker also during the battle. I want to thank you for believing in me. I want to thank you for trusting me. I want to trust, thank you for always giving me that word of encouragement. We thank God that today we are celebrating in the University of Lagos. I believe today's convocation lecture will be stimulating and create the awareness needed for national building. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I think we can do better. Please let's raise it up for our Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much. I recognize on the podium the presence of the Director of Academic Planning, Dr. Mokulo Laulushaki. Please give her a round of applause. I also recognize the Director of Academic Affairs, Mrs. Makide. A round of applause, please. We will move on. At this point, I want to call to the podium for his remarks, the Pro-Chancellor of our university, Senator Prince, Dr. Larry Tejushu, sir. Uh, 
Mr. Speaker, sir. The Right Honorable Fleming Bajabi Amila, the Chairman of today, Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Oje, CON, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Luatun Yogutikwe, and members of the Unilag Governing Council and the management. I will stand on the existing protocols as uh, I believe the Vice Chancellor has given us a lecture before the main lecture, which I'm very proud of. So he has made my work very easy just to give some remarks for today. It is gratifying to once again be attending the convocation lecture of the university. I'm grateful to my friend and brother, Right Honorable Femi Badabia Miller, for graciously accepting to be the guest lecturer. I have no doubt that the lecture will put in context the integral role tertiary education must play in building a Nigeria that we all want to create. I know this because we have on several locations engaged on issues affecting the nation and I'm always enthused by his in-depth knowledge, composure, and the ability to marshal his thoughts. Since he became the Speaker of the House of Representatives, he has shown great leadership and maturity to the admiration of many of us. Little wonder the House, under his watchful eyes, became more focused to delivering on legislative functions. I have on many occasions and in different fora joked that Mr. Speaker's vast knowledge and ability to understand complex but topical issues only stems from his affiliation to the University of Lagos. This uh, institution produces top class graduates who can effectively compete locally and globally. Mr. Speaker, sir, please consider this as a warm homecoming, and we urge you to visit your faculty today, if time permits, and maybe the Lagoon Front. <laughs> we are aware of your great contributions to advancing the University of Lagos, particularly in the area of infrastructural development as ably exemplified by the International Students Hostel, facilitated by you to the university. We are grateful for your continuous kind support to your alma mater. As you will see, sir, the university still needs a lot of support from your good self and other public spirited individuals. We will therefore be using this opportunity to plead that you look at other areas of intervention that the university may benefit from. At this juncture, let me salute the choice of Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Oje CON, Justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as chairperson of this lecture. I have also watched her closely and can tell of her fairness, deep commitment to national development, and the unwavering support for education. On this note, I welcome you all to this fascinating lecture, which commences a week-long convocation activities, which will culminate in the award of higher degrees at the School of Postgraduate Studies. I urge us all to listen to the lecture, as it is timely and germane in our quest to be part of the new movement to make Nigeria great in the 21st century. I also appreciate the university management led, ably led by uh, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Luato Yogudipe and the Senate for putting everything in place to ensure these events are successful. On behalf of the council, I would like to appreciate the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives for accepting in short notice to deliver the convocation lecture. 
I believe today's convocation lecture will set the tone for a new conversation that will continue after today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all and urge you to pay keen attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our Pro Chancellor, Senator Dr. Larry Tejushi. Please give me another round of applause. I still welcome you to the 52nd Convocation Lecture. And like our Vice Chancellor said, this indeed is a beautiful year in the history of our university. There is NUGA, there is our 60th anniversary, and this is his last convocation as a vice chancellor. Please give this hardworking, pragmatic, a man who has left his own on the sands of history of our university, a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will call on the chairperson for our opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my joy and pleasure to call the Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Auge, C-O-N, Justice of the Supreme Court of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now. Uh, good afternoon, the Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Femi Majabi Amila, the Pro-Chancellor, the Vice-Chancellor, and um, other members of the governing council and management, professors, students, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I stand by all existing protocol, but at least, you know, we have to keep, we have to say something. I am highly honored to be here. And first thing I want to say is that um, I'm first and foremost, a law teacher. Anything else I became is what we call Jara. <laughs> Even in the courtroom, I teach, and my colleagues find it so annoying. You, they've been paid millions of dollars to come, and you're still teaching them how to do, do things. You see, what students forget, or they don't forget, they're just not aware, that sooner or later, as a student, you know you're not thinking of tomorrow. You're not thinking of what you do. It's more like the day. We have to pass exams. I have to chase this girl or this boy doesn't want to look at me. That's, that's basically, uh, what's they call it? Testosterone running. You know, and, uh, what you call uh, those days when you enter university, something crush, October rush. You know, they, 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 then you wake up and you are not aware that one day, one day, you're going to have to be on this side where we all are. Somebody has to get there. Somebody has to rise above all of you and lead. We've, they forget that. And how do you get there? Education. Without a proper education, without that food to eat, where to sleep, everything else, education. You have to be properly educated, have that education. Once you are grounded, anything else they ask you to do comes naturally. It becomes, it's like, it's like air that you breathe. It's like anything that you do. But when you don't have, when you have parents who pay for your, um, for you to pass where you can get there, when you go in and you're, and you're somebody, you're, you're cheating the exams or like somebody's passing you through, and then you pass through a university half-baked, one day your parents will not be there. No matter how rich, no matter how influential, no matter who they are, one day they will not be there. And now what happens? Let us imagine, uh, your, 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 look at like that building that collapsed. So you've risen up, let's imagine like it's a water pump. Your parents and those who have the uh, misguided is what I call it, they're like the water pump pouring this water up. And then one day it's not there. What happens? Water must find its level. At that point in time, all your classmates who envied you because you had all that privilege, they've studied, they've read hard, they've had to pass exams on their own merit. 
where will they be? They're up there. And you now have to find your way to go and beg people that you used to look down on. So education is something that we have. Those of us here, those of us here, those of us who have to be in public view in places have to recognize that this is something we must, we must as a nation, as parents, as anything else, as brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, it is something we must make sure our children, your children of your houseboy, children of anybody, because one day we don't know who's going to lead you anywhere. So that is why I'm especially gratified that we have the honorable speaker here. He's going to talk on building back better, creating a new framework for tertiary education in Nigeria in the 21st century. After he has spoken today, I don't want him to leave office and say that um, uh, I didn't do anything about what I said. So he's in a good, he's the best person for us to listen to. He's the best person we expect. We expect that having done all this, said all this, saying and do all this, he will do walk the talk, walk the walk and talk the talk as they call it. Because one message I want to send to everybody is at the moment that you are standing where God has placed you, over and above where your mates will never be able to make it. Look back and see all of those that have died, all of those that have gone into, didn't do anything with their lives, and you are where you can make a difference. It's not about what, what you're going to make from it. It's not about when I walk, I have policemen hanging around me. It's not about I am now here. It is about what did you do when the box stopped with you? How did you translate that privilege to translate that privilege to something that will help generations to come? It doesn't matter whether you're dead or gone. You're dead or you're gone later. But the fact that the day God calls, calls you, you know you've done the best that you can. You've put in everything that he has given you and you have used the skills, talent, education, everything he gave you to do the best that you could so that like a building block, you have created steps for others to rise and rise that will go even greater than you. So I, in, in, in saying what I've said, I have put uh, the honorable speaker uh, that is reminding him that he's not just going to tell us what he's going to tell us. He's also going to make sure that what he tells us by the time he leaves that National Assembly, the book is on there. Like I told him right now, I mean, it's under your watch. Everything going on in this country is right under your watch. You can't say that it's before my time, after my time. No, it's right there. So whatever he's going to tell us, we pray that it is something that he will translate into action. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. If this is the chairman's speech, I dare say more is yet to come. Please let's give another round of applause to the chairman or the chairperson. And let me quickly add to what I said earlier before we started, she had a LLM in this brand, this citadel, this university, university of first choice, and the nation's pride. And that is the stuff we're made of. Another round of applause to her, please. Thank you. Now to the lecture proper. Let me call the Unilagorita, Professor Remosu, for the citation of the guest lecturer. Professor Remosu.
the chairperson of today's convocation lecture, right, um, the Honorable Justice Amina Adamo Aje. I like to stand on the well-established protocol by the Vice Chancellor. Permit me also to respectfully invite the Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, to please come to the podium here for his citation. Olufemi Hakim Bajabi Amila was born on the 25th of June, 1962. He started his education in Lagos at the Mainland Preparatory School, from where he proceeded to Igbobi College, Yaba, Lagos in 1973. There he had a secondary education. Upon completion of his secondary education in Nigeria, he enrolled at King Williams College, Isles of Man, United Kingdom for his advanced level. He graduated at the top of his class and was accepted into the University of Lagos, Nigeria for a three-year LLB Bachelor of Laws degree program. He graduated from the University of Lagos with honors in 1983 and was called to the Nigerian bar in 1984. Fabi Bajabi Almila started his career as a lawyer with the prestigious Lagos-based law firm of Bentley, Edu and Co where he distinguished himself as a brilliant legal practitioner. He eventually left Bentley, Edu and Co to set up his own thriving legal firm, Femi Baja and Co. Femi Baja Biel Miller was never one to rest on his achievements and his enterprising spirit saw him leave Nigeria in 1998 to go back to school at John Marshall Law School in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States of America. He graduated magna cum laude from John Marshall Law School, Atlanta, Georgia, in the United States of America, and earned himself a Juris Doctorate JD degree. He went on to write and pass the Georgia bar exams, after which he set up another thriving law office where he practiced until his return to Nigeria. On his return to Nigeria, Bajami Agila delved into partisan politics and offered himself up for service on the platform of the then Alliance for Democracy, AD. After rigorous and highly competitive campaign, Bajabi Amila was elected a member of the House of Representatives to represent Surulere One Federal Constituency of Lagos. His first term in the House demonstrated his true passion for issues concerning his constituents and Nigeria as a whole. He worked passionately to address matters of great concern to him and quickly earned a reputation as a true and brilliant legislator. A true believer in qualitative representation, he took an active part in debates on the floor of the House and was first recognized as one of the brilliant minds in the National Assembly. He was always on the side of truth and justice and his views truly reflected the wishes and aspirations of his constituents. This was especially evident during the third term debate when he was chairman of the 2007 movement in the house, a group largely credited for ending the third term agenda of the then president of Basanjo. His exceptional record saw him overwhelmingly reelected in 2007. In the same year, his colleagues elected him the leader of his party, the Action Congress, in the House of Representatives and the minority whip. By the end of his second tenure, Bajami Miller had sponsored the highest number of bills in the National Assembly ahead of all other legislators in the House. In 2011, Bajami Miller for the third time contested on the platform of his party, this time the Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, and won. He was once again re-elected the leader of the ACN and leader of the opposition in the House of Representatives. During this period, Femi Bajabi Amila revived the role of the opposition in the House and continued to maintain 
a tough stance against the then ruling party, PDP. Femi Bajabi Amila was the first and only legislator to bring a motion on the floor of the House for the invocation of the doctrine of necessity during the illness and absence of President Umar Musa Yaradwa, which led to the swearing in of Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan as acting president. He has throughout his time in office championed the call for fiscal federalism, accountability in public spending. He filed several lawsuits against the, against the then federal government, whom he accused of operating an illegal excess crude oil account and spending taxpayers' money without appropriation. In 2011, Femi Miller was nominated for a national award, Officer of the Federal Republic. He surprised many Nigerians and received several acclaims when he turned down the award on the grounds that the award system in Nigeria was no longer credible. To this end, Bajabi Amila put up an amendment to the National Honors Act of 1964 to make stringent guidelines for the selection of national award nominees. Bajabi Amila thus became the third and youngest Nigerian to reject the national honors after late Chino Achebe and Professor Grace Alele Williams. In 2014, Femi Bajabi as the leader of the opposition in the House of Representatives, led his colleagues into the merger that gave birth to the All Progressive Congress, APC. Under Femi's leadership of the APC caucus in the House, the party increased its number, earning them the majority. Upon his re-election into the House of Representatives, Representatives in 2015, Bajabi Amila presented himself to his colleagues as an aspirant for speakership seat in the House. He narrowly lost the election to Yakubu Dogara, who emerged as speaker in an election which Bajabi Amila described as an act of God. <clears throat> Due to his wide acceptance within the party and its members, he was overwhelmingly elected majority leader, House leader, of the 8th House of Representatives on July 28, 2015. Upon completion of his fourth term in office, Bajami Amila opened himself up for re-election in the 2019 election, where he was re-elected for the fifth time as the lawmaker representing Surulere one federal constituency in the House of Representatives. On June 11, 2019, he contested for the office of the speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives, an election he narrowly lost in 2015, but this time he won with unprecedented winning margin of 281 votes, while his closest rival scored 76. Act of God. Femi Gwajabi Amila is the Speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives, is one of the longest serving members of the House of Representatives in Nigeria, and has been a principal officer of 12 of his 16 years in the House. His experience in the legislature is therefore uncommon. He has greatly improved on his innate leadership skills by attending various leadership courses at Stanford University, also the UK Oxford University, Cambridge University, and world respected Said Business School. Femi Bajabiemi's life has always been about public service, and over the years, he has demonstrated an unwavering dedication to this cause. His illustrious political career has provided him with a platform with which he has advocated various causes, and his commitment to improving the lives of the average Nigerian is amply demonstrated through the policies and programs he has pursued and promoted in office. In all this, Femi Bajambi Amila is a role model, a true and worthy leader. Representative Honorable Olufemi Hakim Bajambi Amila is happily married with children. The chairman, I present to you our speaker for today, the Right Honorable Femi Bajambi Amila, Speaker of the Federal House of Representative of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A round of applause.
the chairman of this occasion, Justice Amina Adamu Oje, who has in a very clever manner put me on the spot. See, life is very interesting, you know. I've been with her, sat with her all through. We exchanged banters, we cracked jokes. She was very nice to me, I was very nice to her. I didn't realize that she had other plans for me. But she's a woman I greatly admire and respect. She didn't even um, consider the fact that, uh, which I don't know how many of you know that, that her, her son-in-law was the one who nominated me in that very powerful speech on the floor as the Speaker of the House, Abdul Mumuni Jibril. That's, her, that's his mother-in-law. The pro-chancellor, distinguished Senator Prince Larry Tadjoshu, my very good friend who we sojourned through this university together several years ago. If time permits, yes, I will visit the faculty of law. But whether time permits or not, I will not be visiting the Lagoon Front. <laughs> he forgot to mention that he led many of us to the Lagoon Front. <laughs> and that's why when he was made or pronounced the pro-chancellor, many of us sat together, we thought how fortuitous that the man who introduced everybody to the Lagoon Front now resides, because that's where the pro-chancellor's lodge is, now resides at the Lagoon Front. Her Excellency, I understand the Deputy Governor of Ogun State is here, Engineer, Salako Oedele, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Tony Ogundipe, the Chairman, Committee on Defense, Honorable Jimmy Benson, and my colleagues are out here. The Chairman, of course, Committee on Education, Honorable Aminu Suleiman, the University Management and Council, the Student Union member present here today, member, all members of this great institution, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me first of all, excuse myself and that you indulge me that I'm here without the ceremonial cap or hat, as they call it. When we went out there and they put this on me and then they put the, the hat, we found out that it looks ridiculously small <laughs> on my big head. <laughs> and the vice chancellor tried very hard to, he was actually, everybody else was like, no, this is small. And he was like, no, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, so we decided, or I decided, it was better not to conform than attempt to conform and look stupid. <laughs> the takeaway from that for me, that it is never good to dress in borrowed robes. I am honored to join you here today on the 52nd convocation of the University of Lagos. This is homecoming for me, as it was here in this institution that I obtained my law degree 39 years ago in 1983. And driving through the gates this morning, I looked to my right, the old El Kanemi 
to my left, New Hall. Of course, Morimi Hall to my right. And several other buildings of this institution. It brought back memories of deja vu and a lot of nostalgic feelings and a rush of emotions. Just seeing what had become of Unilaga, knowing that I once walked through the grounds of this place. When all those years ago I walked out of this campus with my degree certificates and my ambitions, I did not know that I would one day be invited to deliver the convocation address to an audience as distinguished as this. I believe my presence on this podium today is evidence of the abiding possibilities of life. And coming back here today, after so many years, I am reminded of the debt of gratitude I owe to the visionaries who first conceived of the idea of this institution and worked to make it a reality. I salute them and I'm grateful to the pro-chancellor senator, Dr. Larry Tejosho, the vice chancellor, Professor Tony Ogudipe, and all those who have made this day possible. I also salute all the men and women who labored through the years to sustain the institution in a tradition of excellence. Your hard work and resilience are why the University of Lagos remains the university of first choice and the nation's pride. I have been asked today to speak on the subject, building back better, creating a new framework for tertiary education in Nigeria in the 21st century. The way I see it, I should first assess the conditions of tertiary education in Nigeria. And following that, I will try to articulate the specific actions necessary to bridge the gap so our tertiary institutions can compete favorably in the 21st century. But first, let me begin by asking, what is the purpose of education? In his classic poem, the Georgics, Virgil, the ancient Roman poet wrote, fortunate who was able to know the causes of things. Now this simple poetic turn of phrase is a powerful call to engage in the constant inquiry to understand the foundational truths that underpin our understanding of the world, motivate our practices, and inspire our actions. Evidently, one purpose of education is to empower the individual to embark on a voyage of discovery that leads to clarity. But the question is that, is that the sole purpose? Professor Nike Ijaya, I'm sure you all know of her, of the University of Illinois posits the intention of education is to equip the child as early as possible with the knowledge, values, and skills he needs to navigate this complex world for the sake of his own comfort and of society. Professor Ijaya's formulation aligns with that of Dr. Martin Luther King, who we also all know very well. And he wrote in 1947 that education has a two-fold function to perform in the life of man and the society. The one is utility, and the other is culture. Education must enable a man to become more efficient, to achieve with increasing facility the legitimate goals of his life. Education must also train one for quick, resolute, and effective thinking. Now, central to all of these formulations is the idea that the primary purpose of education is to improve the individual in mind and empower them to be beneficial to themselves and to the society. A good education should produce an individual confident of his or her own abilities, capable of logical thought, aware of his own shortcomings, but not constrained by them. Cognizance of his rights and of his responsibilities within the community. 
To these, I will add that a good education produces citizens invested in the progress and well-being of their society. And who have the wherewithal to take positive action to those societies better, to make those societies better. The well-educated citizen in this paradigm understands his society, thinks logically about its problems without being overwhelmed by half-truths, prejudices, and propaganda, and is therefore able to make informed and valid contributions to the administration and progress of that society. Now, when we think about education policy, when we consider laws and implement directives relating to education in our country, particularly tertiary education of which we speak today. Our highest objective must be to deliver an education system capable of producing the archetype of an individual. When we consider the problems of education infrastructure, access to education opportunities, quality of instruction, the welfare of teachers, lecturers, and professors, we will do well to remember that all of these factors matter only to the extent that they are necessary to build institutions that produce citizens who can advance the cause of Nigeria. Let's not make a mistake about this. Our world has changed. The old certainties from which we de derived assurance and built our expectations no longer exist. The value of the extractive industries that have powered our economy has deteriorated. It continues to do so rapidly as technology advanced, technological advances lead us towards a future where coal, crude, and gas are replaced by renewable alternatives of solar, wind, and water. For Nigerian citizens to thrive in this new world and to participate fully and productively in the new global economy and benefit from rather than be consumed by the technological advancements that are changing our world, Tertiary education in Nigeria must be prepared to embrace reinvention and adapt to disruption. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria guarantees the fundamental right to dignity of the human person. In a digital age, where socioeconomic participation is based on intellectual ability and access to information, a purposeful and well-rounded education is a fundamental human right because the individual's ability to participate fully in society depends almost entirely on the quality of education available to them. Now I say human right, and sometimes I even elevate it to the status of fundamental human right, because sometimes people make the mistake, and we're very prone to do, the, to do this, all over the world, not just in Nigeria, that education is sometimes considered to be a privilege. Perhaps maybe it was at one time. But today, it is a non-negotiable fundamental human right. Unfortunately, it is still the case that the foundations of our education system are rooted in a different age and designed to meet the social, economic, and labor demands of the different societal and economic models. As the world has changed, which I said, which I stated earlier, we have not done enough in government, in academia, and in society to adjust our education and our skills. We need to adjust our skills acquisition system to meet these new realities. Now, how do we move from our present circumstances? What does this moment require of us? That is the ultimate question. Yes, we are where we are. But what does this moment require of us to live frog and to move? Together with the community of nations and the advanced world. For me, it requires first that we be honest about the scale of challenges that we face. I'm sure you've all heard people say honesty is the best policy. Honesty about the scale of the challenges we face and the realities of our present circumstances free us to engage in the sort of radical thinking and innovation that would have been considered taboo just a few years ago. Most national policy discussions of higher education focus on structure 
and financing. Understandably so. However, the essential issues of curriculum, teaching methods, assessment, and fairness that should engage our minds to be part of any reform proposition. Wholesale reviews of our curricula and teaching methods to situate our practices in the context of global labor needs to the barest minimum. Now, this does not take away from the need to institute a program of aggressive and sustained investment in the physical infrastructure of classrooms and lecture halls and technology hardware and software to facilitate information exchange and innovation. Recently, very recently, and I think the, the vice chancellor alluded to this when he was making his remarks cum lecture, the world has had to cope with the unforeseen effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And our education system has not been spared. A natural alteration of the 2020 academic calendar became imminent. I've been made to understand that the University of Lagos, under the leadership of the Vice Chancellor, Professor Toyin Ogudikwe, was the first public tertiary institution to adopt virtual learning in quick response to the disruption occasioned by the COVID-19 lockdown. This great institution conducted lectures, examinations, and even the post-UTME virtually. Free data was also made available to students. Hence, ICT rescued the academic calendar of our institution. Now, this is the kind of radical thinking and innovation needed in our citadels of learning. Tertiary institutions in Nigeria need to develop a new understanding of the changing nature of work and the future of employment and allow this new understanding to inform the nature of instruction and the substance of the education they provide. Collaboration between our higher institutions and the organized private sector is vital in this regard so that we can jointly rise to the demands of the moment. Wealth creation and Value addition in the 21st century flow from enterprises that take advantage of emerging opportunities to expand the frontiers of innovation. In this new system, a qualitative tertiary education should empower young people to be entrepreneurial in their thinking and in how they navigate their chosen careers. Therefore, tertiary education in Nigeria must include entrepreneurship training and promote vocational skills as a feature of all courses and programs. Now, across the world, a symbiotic training of academia with the private sector has allowed the creation of knowledge hubs that drive innovation and education and uh, economic advancement. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, California Stanford University has become both the training ground for Silicon Valley's elite and the beneficiary of enormous contributions in manpower, financial resources, and networking opportunities that have turned the institution into a powerhouse for the ages. So I've often wondered, sometimes aloud, that why similar arrangements have not been recreated in our environment. If it's good for Stanford, it's good for the University of Lagos. We can all easily agree that many universities in the country, private and public, would benefit significantly from such close contact with private sector energy, practice and resources. What then mitigates against this level of close collaboration? These are the questions we need to ponder upon. Is it the existing laws? Is it reluctance on the university's part of the, or the organized private sector itself? These are some of the questions we must ask and answer as we seek to reposition tertiary education in Nigeria to meet the demands of a changing world. One area where we already have the basic framework for collaboration is the industrial attachment program. What we now need is to identify ways to improve on this program. Tertiary institutions of learning should identify and partner with private sector organizations to provide practical experience for students as part of their academic training 
throughout their course. Now, what this will do is it will significantly improve the current practice of requiring students to undergo this portion of their training in organizations that do not allow them to get the full benefit of the experience. Advancing our tertiary institutions into the 21st century demands that we do whatever is required in terms of changes to legislation, regulation, or to policy to achieve this sort of closer synergy between the private sector and our education, educational and training institutions. For the sake of our nation's future, we cannot leave the ideals of building back better for the government alone to pursue. Let me repeat, for the sake of our future, we cannot leave the ideals of building back better for government alone to pursue. It's not done anywhere in the world. Even as we look outward, we must consider the possibilities for extensive and multi-dimensional collaboration with academia. Keeping in mind that the objective is to improve productivity, tertiary institutions need to engage with the possibility of integrating university courses across departments and disciplines, such as merging law with economics and technology, medicine with engineering and accounting, media with governance and administration. Another such partnerships that seemingly that sound weird, sound weird because we're not thinking outside the box. We're used to those stereotypes, those basic law, medicine. No, there must be cross-discipline partnership. And what does this do? It, broadens the horizon. It expands the knowledge base of the student and prepares him for much flexibility and dexterity to do things that he would ordinarily not be able to do if he had been restricted into a straight jacket in one particular uh, discipline. We must also consider statutory and operational reforms to encourage closer collaboration between tertiary institutions, public and private. Today, our tertiary institutions exist and operate primarily in independent silos. Alternative to this is an approach wherein tertiary institutions work as part of an interdependent network to establish a collaborative research and development ecosystem training and resource sharing. Multidimensional collaborations will increasingly be the key to, mod, to building modern tertiary institutions in Nigeria, capable of holding their own in the modern education system. And then there is the issue of how we finance tertiary education in Nigeria, the all important issue of finance. This is an area of much controversy. However, two things remain true. The first is that building the kind of institutions we need and desire will require significant investments. And the second is that the current approach is neither adequate nor sustainable as it heavily depends on subventions from the federal and state governments. Therefore, I believe that we must agree to use the instruments of policy and legislation to advance a new framework for funding tertiary education in our country. And yes, my lord, what I say I will do, I will do. Ideally, this new system should provide funding for all students who qualify so that the burden of school fees and living expenses can be deferred and paid over a period of time. This is, it's a no brainer. And it's something that happens all over the world, at least in advanced democracies. 
It must also ensure that the institutions get paid for their services so that resources are available to operate effectively. Now, a little anecdote here, as, uh, something very dear to my heart. As a politician, one of the most frequent requests I receive is for funding to meet the needs of students who are unable to fund their tertiary education. Students who are otherwise, you speak to them for just a minute, you find out how brilliant their mind is. And the education is cut short just because they do not have the necessary economic wherewithal to advance that education. It's the biggest request I get as a politician from people, my constituents and even those outside my constituents. Now this is an ongoing problem that puts us at a risk of losing some of the brightest young minds in our country. A well-structured student loan system is one way to do this. This already exists in many parts of the world, like I said earlier. And we can borrow from best practices to deliver a system that meets our unique needs. In the National Assembly, we're working on the Students' Loan Access to Higher Education Bill, which I sponsored. This bill will establish the framework for providing interest-free loans to students with repayment of these loans beginning two years after the completion of the National Youth Service and spread over time. So the loan which establishes an education bank will be interest-free, a moratorium of two years upon completion of the youth service program. Reason being that we expect that given two years after youth service, hopefully, more likely than not, the student will get a job and will be able to repay spread over time. Now we will continue that effort until we successfully design a system that addresses our concerns and meets our needs in our own unique way as a country. However, we must all understand that public support for any such system will depend significantly on the tertiary institutions themselves. As I said before, tertiary education costs money all over the world. The reason why people nonetheless persist in paying these huge sums is that the value proposition is evident. Tertiary institutions in Nigeria must also be prepared to make the value of their services clear to students and parents alike. In a world where an undergraduate with technical computing skills can provide services to the global market from their bedroom and earn significant sums in exchange, a degree certificate by itself doesn't hold the same value it once did. We must recognize this reality and act with that in mind. The Ninth House of Representatives has education as one of its key areas of focus in its legislative agenda. We term that legislative agenda our contract with Nigerians. And that, 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 that was a de deliberate choice of words. We termed it a contract with Nigerians. So we set the bar and place benchmarks and boxes besides everything we have said we will do. And so that at the end of our four year tenure, Nigerians can tick the boxes and determine whether we have done what we said we would do in that legislative agenda, which is a public document, by the way and which is available to everyone. We intend to be held by that. We are, for instance, taking active steps to upgrade many of our public institutions, elevating some colleges of education to universities of education, amongst others. This has increased the employability and viability of research work in our country. Recently, the House intervened in the face of between the federal government and the academic staff union 
of universities to avert a strike action. That intervention also led to the recent approval of the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, UTAS. For the payment, for the payment of lecturers in Nigerian universities. Ladies and gentlemen, I as a person, I have always been passionate about education. Education is the silver bullet that cuts through most of our national challenges. Now people, there's a, there's a common phrase, there is no silver bullet, there is no silver bullet. But education is that silver bullet that cuts across through most of our national challenges. Think about it. We believe no child should be left behind or denied the opportunity to receive the freedom that, an, that a good education provides. As a legislator, I have put considerable emphasis on policies and interventions to improve education access and quality. As part of that effort, I have provided educational grants for selected students from my Surrey Area 1 federal constituency studying in public tertiary institutions. And of course, that includes the University of Lagos. I have worked to attract infrastructural development projects to tertiary institutions in Lagos State, including the free Wi-Fi facilities in six public tertiary institutions in Lagos State. A dedicated international students hostel here in the University of Lagos, as the Vice, uh, the Vice Chancellor uh, mentioned, and amongst other such infrastructural uh, development. As we depart this hall, I will proceed to the College of Medicine at, of this same University of Lagos for the foundation laying of a new medical outpatient center for the benefit of Luth, Ijiaraba, and members of the public. Teachers and students are the greatest beneficiary of our educational intervention projects in my constituency. We have provided modern ICT centers in 12 schools, and we are still constructing more. Just as we are renovating many schools at primary and secondary levels, providing instru instructional materials for ease of learning and e-learning tablets and laptops for teachers and students in the constituency. And we'll continue to do more in revamping our educational system. <laughs> Sustainable reform can be, cannot, I beg your pardon, be imposed from the outside. For reform to be effective, and for it to be long lasting, it must come from within the institutions. More than financing and curriculum technology, more than teaching methods, there is a fundamental question of fairness that our, our higher institutions continue to contend with and must address before we can hope to have them participate fully and profitably in the global community of education and innovation. Let's talk about the very sensitive subject of sexual harassment. We have a problem with harassment and victimization in our higher institutions. We must call it what it is. And this is not a problem of a few bad eggs spoiling the whole bunch. No, it's not. It is a consequence of weak institutional mechanisms susceptible to egregious abuse by those for whom power is not a call to service, but an opportunity to take more than they are entitled to and sacrifice the future of others on the altar of their own base desires. We cannot aspire to build 21st century institutions capable of competing effectively in the global space when this issue remains a recurring cause for concern. And we will not solve this problem through occasional purges brought on by external denunciations in the press or on social media, but by reconstructing how tertiary institutions operate as a matter of course. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I propose that we adopt across the board a system of zero tolerance for individuals, students, or staff who credibly accuse who are credibly accused of harassment, intimidation, and any infringements of 
individual autonomy. Let it be the role of the independent panels made up of persons of integrity and unquestionable authority to educate the credibility and interrogate the genuineness of complaints, taking only relevant variables into considerations and after that, proposing a course of action to which the university must be bound. Our universities must be places of learning and innovation where people feel safe and where injustice in all its forms has no place. The summary of it all is very simple. Where we are is not where we ought to be. Moving from here requires a concerted and collaborative effort between government, our tertiary institutions, st and stakeholders from the worlds of business and philanthropy to pursue new approaches. The country is faced with yet another election in 2023. Before the 2019 general elections, we amended the constitution of our republic to reduce age restrictions for elective offices so that more eligible young people can participate in the politics and governance of our country. Last year, I had hoped that as part of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, we could effect the direct primary method as a procedure for nominating candidates by political parties. Direct primary elections give every registered member of a political party the right to choose the candidates to represent the party in elections. It is inclusive, not exclusive. Over time, this method has proved to be the most effective way of expanding citizen participation in the party, in the party nomination and leadership recruitment process. We are now in the process of sampling the diverse views on how to move forward with the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And I expect that these and other issues will be resolved soon when we get back to the House this week. I also believe that the time has come for us to agree to review section 131 subsection D of the 1999 constitution to increase the minimum educational qualification for persons aspiring to political office in Nigeria. We cannot, on one hand, be talking about raising the standard of education in Nigeria, and on the other hand, requiring the barest minimum for those who will govern us. The constitution as it is today requires a secondary school certificate or its equivalent as the minimum academic qualification for higher political office. This is the requirement for qualification to contest for governor, national assembly, or president. Ladies and gentlemen, this provision is the product of a different time and reflects the reality of that time. Yes, It is time to take another look at that position as part of the ongoing effort to reform our electoral system and establish a fully participatory democracy, providing the capable leader, leadership our country needs. Let us lift our gaze from considerations of small things to focus on the pursuit and achievement of grand ambitions that lift us all and save the future. Through our joint efforts, let us raise a generation in whose hearts the light of understanding is lit and cannot be put out, who possess both the zeal and the passion for defeating the tyranny of low expectations and making good the life of man here on earth. This convocation, first and foremost, honors the dedication and diligence of the graduates who have completed their course of study and will today be sent forth to go and make their way in this brave new world. 
I congratulate you all most certainly on your achievement. You have the good fortune to be graduating at a time of great uncertainty in the world. And many will ask, what is this guy talking about? How can he say that we have the good fortune to be graduating at a time of great uncertainty in the world? What's so good about that fortune? Well, this is a historic moment fraught with opportunity and peril, brought on by advancements in technology, accelerated globalization, and the reformation of the global economic and political order. And you are fortunate because throughout recorded history, it is in times such as this, that men and women of talent and ability make their name and build their fortunes. Check out the records, check out your history. It is at times like this, the men and women with talent and ability make their name, their mark, and build their fortunes. And that's why I said, you're fortunate. As you enter the world, allow me to share a few lessons I have learned on my own journey over the nearly four decades since I sat when you now sit. And I hope that these lessons will guide you to achieve your highest potential. First, to thine own self be true. You will be called on to take the tough decisions and make hard choices in your life's journey. What you do in those circumstances has to be based on an absolute conviction in your spirit. It is that conviction that will give you the courage to stand by the principles you hold dear, even when no one else does. To quote the late Steve Jobs, who we all know, don't let the noise of other opinions drown out your own inner voice. Let me repeat. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. Following that, you must, as the words of John Wesley, now listen to me carefully, very carefully. Do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. All the achievements of your life, however grand they may be, and I'm sure they're very grand, or they will be grand, they will amount to naught if in the full accounting you haven't done enough to make this world even just a little better for others. Let empathy and the kindness that flow from it be your legacy in this world. Education is the key to freedom. I've always believed that. Yet it is the hallmark of the educated mind to recognize that your education is not enough. And from that recognition, devote yourself to lifelong learning. Do not close your mind to the possibilities that exist. All things are to be examined and called into question. All things. If you do this, you will light a candle of understanding in your heart, which shall never be put out. Having toiled night and day for many years, you have earned the tools you need to participate in the world. Now you must go out there and carve out your place at the table and eventually at the head of the table. Do not allow yourself to fall into the trap of thinking that having earned your degree, the world now owes you something. No, 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 no. It doesn't. The world owes you nothing. Nothing will be handed to you. Everything must be achieved 
with the same hard work and dedication that has carried you to this moment. But here's the good news. The world is your oyster. Go out and eat it. I congratulate you once more, graduates, and I salute all the friends and family, guardians and supporters who have contributed in one form or the other to the success we have gathered to celebrate today. Go forth and succeed. Thank you for listening. God bless you. God bless University of Lagos and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please let's be seated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that was the guest lecture from our guest lecturer, Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please let's give it up for him once more. At this point, I'll call on the chairperson, the chairman for our closing remarks. Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Augi, CON, Justice of the Supreme Court, Federal Republic of Nigeria, ma'am. Okay, I'm back again to close. <laughs> I was teasing him. I said, well, it looked like I knew what he was going to say. And I prepared the way for him to go and say it. And he said it. And he has publicly promised all of us that everything he said is going to, 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 to work on. And um, we will hold him up to his promise. But I, I believe that he will do what he wants to say. Now, in um, closing remarks, I want to thank everybody. Thank all of you. I know somebody is going to go uh, say the vote of thanks, but I want all of us, those listening out there, those of us here to realize, to, to hold on to that thought that, that what we do with ourselves, educating ourselves, making us ready to face what life has to come is our personal choice. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody's going to say do or don't do. But when you do get yourself groundly, properly and soundly education, everything's like a vehicle that will take you to the highest point ever. If you don't get it ready and you're sitting down there, you'll never be able to get across the place. Now, I want to end by, I, I want to at least talk about, uh, yesterday we had to go to a Thanksgiving uh, event at uh, uh, Redeemed, uh, um, church in Aja, and I walked in, I saw the pastor here today, but he said something that resonated with all of us there. He was talking about how, um, I, I wouldn't refer to, I mean, he has all the biblical thing, but more or less saying that what seems so uncertain, chaotic, as if impossible to, that can happen today, but we don't know what tomorrow will come and how things changed. And then he used the example of, I hope you do know how the British government have been sending aircraft to carry our nurses, our doctors, physiotherapists, all the health officials. So the message he was trying to tell the congregation was that um, it's not impossible, go now and start studying, make sure you have the certificate. But I want to talk about those ones that had them. Because he made a point to say that uh, they go there, they give them visa on arrival. And he says, these are people, there are people who could wait how many years that the visa office trying to get, beg to get a visa, killing themselves to get visas. These people were seated, but they had their certificates in their hands. So when it came time, when God said it was time, they are now being begged to say, please come and uh, help us out. So this is a lesson to all of us to say that at any moment in time, may we be ready for what it is that we need to do with the certificates that we have got. But be ready, 
me make sure you do get that education so that you are ready for it so i hope that um, uh, we have at least made the points that others will take home resonate with them also and know that um, tomorrow may change right now covid all kinds of things can happen but those who make billions those who, who make money are those who take risks if you check history, if you read autobiographies, it's those who, who at the moment of, um, it's like saying like in an earthquake, gold that was buried, diamonds hidden somewhere comes out. It's at times like that, that those who take risks now make so much money that comes out there. So we don't know what tomorrow we may bring that will suddenly in front of you open up and you find out that all you were studying and getting ready for was for this uh, moment. When I talk to people, when I talk to students and everybody, or anybody I talk to, I tell them that um, you see this thing about preparing for that day. I, I'm waiting for that day where I, I will be in the public uh, glare or anything like that. I tell them, I said, if you, if you look back, if you check your stage, wherever you are, at, at, on a stage may be that place wherever you're walking in life you don't know that you're walking on a stage because suddenly you're standing there and if you're inside a room this wall falls this wall falls the one this side falls the one behind falls and then you're standing there and you're being asked like me now i don't know why i was asked to come and chair but i didn't know what i was going to say what I asked myself was, how did I get here? I did my master's in Unilag here. I went to Great Ife. That's the this thing. <laughs> uh, Great Ife, yes, you know. So, but I did my master's here. And I was going through the gate. I was telling the protocol officer, I said, which gate are we going to use? Because when I was a student here, we had to use the back gate to be able to get in in time. So I was asking myself, how now did I get here where I have to chair? a convocation uh, lecture. When I was being given my gown, the, the guy in charge of gowns, chairman, the gown for the chairman, and he's just looking, the guy said, the chairman, he says, oh, I'm so used to the chairman, the chairman being a man, I didn't expect. <laughs> I'm standing there waiting for my, my gown. He said, oh, I'm so used to it being men. I, I, I didn't expect that it's a woman that will be a chairman this year. But, but, but then what, what, what does that say? What does that say? That if I have worked all my life, done everything, I'm 68. And at 68, you say, OK, you're going to all that you've done. You're going to now have to speak today. And all I ask God is, please, God, let me be ready to say what it is that you want me to say. Just speak through me. Speak through me, because at this point, how I got here, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So please, 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 let us take home that the students have to realize you have to teach your children. You have to talk to your students. You have to prepare them. Primary school from everywhere. Education is your personal choice. It is for your future. As Justice Augi is standing here, may it be that one day I will be standing there. Not that you will, you will just, you know, if we talk about planting seeds and then some just grow a bit, wither away and die. Some actually take root and grow into huge trees. I don't want to be like a weed that will dry up tomorrow and be swept. No, I want to be that tree that will grow, provide shade, provide fruit, provide everything until the day I say that I'm going. It's a choice. So if you choose to misuse your time in school, if you choose to do what you should, you know, the brilliance that you have, those who are hacking, those who are doing all these things, it's the same brain, and that's what the pastor said. It's the same brain that you're using. Instead of using it positively, you're now using it negatively. Turn it into something good that it will be spoken of you good, not that you end up. We send so many, well, I send so many people to prison. For, uh, we, but we sentence to death. When I tell people we have the power, power, power in our hands, you know, you see judges and you're pushing them away. One day, one day, your life, your property, your liberty, all I have to do is sign a pen. 
I sign a pen, I take your life, I take your property, and I take your everything. So, I mean, we have the power, but we're sitting down there. Do you want to be able to have that power tomorrow? Would you want to be able to change people's lives positively? Would you want to add value at whatever position in life that you are? Add value, not to poison the environment, not to poison everywhere, not to lead people astray, not to lead them to walk in evil ways. It's a choice, and it starts with what? A proper and sound education. So I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in our usual way, we will be acknowledging the guest lecturer. And so permit me to call on our pro chancellor, aided by our vice chancellor, to do the presentation of gifts to our guest lecturer. And so I have the privilege to call our pro chancellor, the vice chancellor, and the guest speaker to please come so that they can do officially gifted. Please let's encourage them and give them a round of applause as they come. <laughs> Corporate gift for the convocation lecturer, Honorable Olufemi Akin, but your dear Milan Speaker of the House of Representatives, titled Shita Suruleri. A panoramic picture showing Shita Akireli, Alaji Masha Road, Teslim Balogun Stadium, and Elvara. Let me call on the chairperson. My lord, ma. You better be careful the way you say, my lord, <laughs> so that she will not sign you out. <laughs> A corporate gift for the chairperson of this convocation lecture, Honorable Justice Amina Adamu Ugi, CON, Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, titled National Arts. Theater Igomu. A, the picture captures the theater in its form, the exterior part of it, with the really the light rail station behind it. National Theater was designed by architect Stefan Colchi.
Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure it has been a beautiful day. And it is such a beautiful way to start our convocation ceremonies. Let me remind us once again that this is our 52nd convocation lecture, starting and kicking off the 52nd convocation ceremonies. We have quickly come to the end of the lecture. And let me call on the Registrar of University of Lagos, Aziz Oladejo Esquire, for the vote of thanks. Please let's give him a round of applause. The chairman of this occasion, our pro-chancellor and chairman of governing council, the 12th vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, our distinguished guest lecturer, ladies and gentlemen, in the last one and a half hours, we have all listened to an excellent analysis of the challenges of tertiary education in Nigeria by the Speaker of House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. Permit me, distinguished audience, to commence this vote of thanks by first congratulating the Pro Chancellor and Chairman of Council, distinguished Senator Prince Dr. Orlan Rewaju Teji Osho, and our amiable Vice Chancellor, Professor Luato Itemitayo Ogundipe FAS, for painstakingly assisted this audience by going for the caliber of the guest lecturer of today and our Mibu chairman. It is on this note that I want to thank the chairman of this occasion on behalf of the management of the University of Lagos, Milord Justice Amina, Adamu Awigi C.O.N. for sacrificing the precious time as a justice of the APS course of Nigeria to come to Ahama Mata, the University of Lagos today. Applause for the chairman. We're also grateful to the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives for also finding time out of his busy schedule to deliver the 52nd Convocation Lecture of the University of First Choice and the Nation's Pride, the University of Lagos. Applause for the Speaker of the House of Rep. The Speaker is here with so many dignities of the House of Representatives too many to mention, but permit me, distinguished audience, to single out two of them for mentioning. First is the Chairman, House Committee on Tertiary Education and Services, Dr. Aminu Sulaiman. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. The Chairman, House Committee on Defense is also here with me. He's also here in this hall. Thank you very much, sir. Permit me also to acknowledge the contributions of members of management of the University of Lagos who have been supporting the Vice Chancellor in the past four years. Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics and Research, Professor Oluwole Familoni FAS, we thank you. Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development Services, Professor Ayodele Asenua, thank you very much for standing by the Vice Chancellor. 
Deputy Vice Chancellor, Management Services, Professor Lucian Obina Chuku, we are very grateful to you. The boss of the university, Dr. Lale Kanlawa, thank you very much for making money available all the time. Our university librarian and the first person to be appointed a university professor in the University of Lagos, Professor Yetun Zaid, we are so much grateful to you. In management also is the Provost College of Mercy, University of Lagos, Idiaraba. Professor David Adewale, okay. Thank you so much, sir. The Director of Academic Planning is also there in management, Professor Mukulola Ulusakin. Thank you, Ma, for supporting the Vice Chancellor. I also want to thank the Director of College of Assurance and Savicom, Professor Grace Otinwa, for her efforts in, management, in moving the University of Lagos forward. Since Saturday, members of the Governing Council of the University of Lagos have been meeting to, to deliberate on so many matters concerning staff welfare. Here in this hall are federal government appointees of council. Dr. Amin Mohamed, we thank you for your support to our great university. Chief Tina Du Adindu, we thank you, sir, for your efforts. Comrade Mustafa Salu, we also thank you, sir. In the hall with us, so are also internal members of council who are representing various intergroups and stakeholders within the university. Professor Bola Obo, we are grateful to you, ma. Professor Lukemi Odukoya, thank you very much. Professor Solomon Akimboye, we thank you, sir. And representing the congregation, Uluwa Roti Miso Dimu Esquire, thank you very much for your contribution to the council. Again, Professor Owolabi Latif Kuye, we thank you. The former Deputy Governor of Lagos State is also here with us. We thank you very much, sir, for attending this occasion. And also the Deputy Governor of Ogun State, we are grateful to you. The distinguished scholars who constitute the Senate of the University of Lagos deserve to be praised. Words are not enough to thank you for your efforts in ensuring that this convocation ceremony holds today. Thank you, members of Senate of the University. We are also blessed to have emeritus professors, distinguished professors, past deputy vice chancellors who have served this university meritoriously for so many decades in this hall. We are grateful to you all for attending this convocation lecture. Deans of faculty, heads of departments and units who are also toiling day and night to make the university the best in the world, we are grateful to you. Permit me to also appreciate the immediate past register of this university, Dr. Taiwo for La Chade Paye, FNIM, who is now Director of Tom Banevo Digital Research Center for finding time to attend this occasion. We are grateful to you, ma. The chairman and members of the ceremonies committee of this university who have put this occasion together is led by Professor Mike Adebamowo of the Department of Architecture. We are grateful to you, sir. Gentlemen of the press, traditional rulers, union leaders, members of staff generally in registry, bursty, audit, works and physical planning, CITS, security, international school, staff school, and several others. We are grateful for the various efforts you are putting in into the system to ensure that your university remains the best. Do remember that this convocation ceremony will continue tomorrow and will last till Friday. 
we expect you all to be here to witness this occasion. And as you come, please observe COVID-19 protocol. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for coming and, and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the lecture. I will crave your indulgence that after we take the closing prayers, we'll take the university anthem followed by the national anthem. And you will please allow the people on the podium to process out before we follow them. Thank you very much. Professor Musa will please come to give us the closing prayer, sir. Shall we pray? A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam tagfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna minal khasirin. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. We thank Allah the all-knowing, the most wise. We thank you for the blessings you have bestowed on this nation. We thank you for your numerous masses on this university. We thank you for these convocation ceremonies that has successfully commenced. Oh Allah, we thank you that as we start this ceremony, you will stay with us throughout. Grant us honor, grant us success, grant us victory. We thank you for the lecture delivered by Honorable Abla Hakim Bajabi Amila. It's an asset to this nation. It's also an asset to the University of Lagos. Oh Allah, continue to inspire him. He has more to offer. Grant him the where without to be able to do more for this university and for this country. As we leave here to come back tomorrow, continue to be our nourisher and sustainer. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, sir. Please, can we stand for the university anthem followed by the national anthem?
Standing while the people on the podium take the procession out. Thank you very much. <laughs> 